What's up guys? Today's video is on the best mobile game controllers in 2022. Through extensive research and testing, I've put together a list of options, that'll meet the needs of different types of buyers, so whether it's price performance or its particular use, we've got you covered. For more information on the products, I've included links in the description box down below, which are updated for the best prices. Like the video, comment, and don't forget to subscribe. Let's get started. At number 11. Keymander 2 Mobile, for mouse and keyboard fans. For some of us, playing a first-person shooter just doesn't feel right without a keyboard and mouse. This unusual niche device enables you to play on an iPhone, iPad, or Android phone with a wired or wireless keyboard and mouse, but it does so in a confusing, cobbled-together kind of way. You need either the official Sony PlayStation 4 controller or Microsoft Xbox One wireless controller with Bluetooth, specifically Model 1708, and those connect via micro USB cable to the Keymander 2. It's essentially using the controller support to connect the mouse and keyboard, and you configure them in the K2 Mobile Game Dock app. The dock is a little flimsy, but it managed to hold my iPad in place, with ports in the side and back for plugging everything in. I struggled to get it all working, as the instructions are not the clearest, but once it was hooked up and configured, playing Fortnite, Call of Duty, and Minecraft was a breeze. The Keymander 2 Mobile could also work well for remote play on PlayStation or Xbox or for a streaming service like Stadia. Just be aware that only games with controller support work well, and you do need to tweak settings frequently for best results. At number 10. Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, for Nintendo owners. You can use a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller with Android, but sadly there's no official iOS support. To connect to an Android device, simply hold down the sync button on the top of the Nintendo Switch Pro Controller until it starts flashing. Turn on Bluetooth on your phone and go to Settings, Connected Devices, and choose Pair New Device, then select the Pro Controller. Just like the PS and Xbox controllers, it won't work perfectly with every game. At number 9. Microsoft Xbox Wireless Controller, White, for Xbox owners. If you already play on Xbox, you may as well use the Xbox Wireless Controller with your phone. We have an easy pairing guide, and it's a cinch to pair with an iPhone, iPad, Android phone, or tablet via Bluetooth. It may require configuration for some games, and it's not going to work with everything. If you are an Xbox Game Pass Ultimate subscriber, find out how to stream Xbox and PC games on your Android phone. Add a Power A Moga mobile gaming clip, $10, to mount your phone, and game on. At number 8. Sony DualSense Controller, for PS5 owners. If you have a controller as good as the DualSense, you should use it every chance you get. It's a PlayStation 5 highlight that's highly responsive, refined, and durable. And since it supports Bluetooth, you can pair it with your smartphone just as you would any other Bluetooth device, here's a pairing guide. It won't work with every game, and you won't get the full benefit of the adaptive triggers unless you use it with the PS5, but it makes a great mobile stand-in. If you like the idea of playing PlayStation games on your phone, try the PS Remote Play app for Android or iOS. Add an Orsley Gaming Clip, $13, to mount your phone, and you are all set. You can also use the PS4's DualShock 4 controller with smartphones, it pairs via Bluetooth, too. At number 7. Game Sur X2, for Android gamers. With a Nintendo Switch aesthetic and button layout, this controller is compact and doesn't need much power, making it ideal for on-the-go gaming. It stretches open to cradle virtually any Android phone in its rubbery embrace, accommodating devices up to 6.8 inches long and 0.39 inches thick, it can even hold a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 3. The textured sections provide great grip, and you get solid twin joysticks, a D-pad, and plenty of buttons, though the shoulder triggers are basic. It sports a USB-C connector for smooth gaming, with much lower latency compared to Bluetooth controllers. I tested it with the Pixel 6, and it felt tailor-made for twin-stick shooters like Jidge. It worked with most of the games I tried, but not all, and if you need to map keys, you must use the buggy and confusing GameSir app. I do worry about the long-term impact of the swiveling USB-C connector on my phone's port, and since there's no power button, you won't want to leave your phone in it all the time. At number 6. Power A Moga XB5X, for Xbox Remote Play. Ideal for Xbox Remote Play, this controller will feel instantly familiar to Xbox owners, and it even has an Xbox button in the center like the official model. It's much lighter, but there are solid standard Xbox buttons, grippy thumbsticks, and a couple of programmable pushers on the back. 
The only disappointment is the mushy D-pad and the lack of any haptics. The clip design is smart, with two adjustable joints and a cradle that expands to accommodate most phones. It even has minimal forked prongs that avoid the power or volume buttons on the side of your phone. The connection to your phone is a choice of cable or Bluetooth. With a 3000 mAh rechargeable battery inside, the Moga XP5X boasts long battery life and can even double up as a portable battery pack. It charges via a micro USB port in the top, and there's a USB a port that can be used to plug a cable into your phone's USB C port. The supplied cable caters to both. Weirdly, there's no Xbox support, so you can stream Xbox games from your console to your phone with remote play, but you can't play on the Xbox itself with this controller. At number 5. Steel Series Stratus Plus, for PC gamers. Replacing its predecessor, the Duo, on this list, the Steel Series Stratus Plus is perfect for flicking between games on an Android device and your PC or laptop. It feels much like an Xbox wireless controller, with a similar button layout, although it has symmetrical thumbsticks with a disappointingly mushy D-pad offset at the top left. You can connect wirelessly to an Android phone or Chromebook via Bluetooth LA 4.1 or use the USB-C port to connect a cable for PC gaming. If you crave wireless PC gaming, the Stratus Duo, $59, is still a better pick, because there's no Wi-Fi support with the Stratus Plus, but you do get a smartphone clip in the box, and it's a clever new design that folds flat for easy storage. While the Duo was prone to disconnecting from my Pixel 6, my week with the Stratus Plus has been plain sailing. Steel Series says the battery can go for up to 90 hours, and just 15 minutes of charging gets you 12 hours of gameplay. Playing bursts of jidge through the week, there's still battery life, and it feels slick and accurate. The Stratus Plus also worked well with games in my Steam library without configuration, and it's a recommended controller for Nvidia's GeForce Now. At number 4. Backbone 1, for iPhone gamers. The Backbone 1 is a delight. Plug the lightning connector into your iPhone, stretch the controller over it, and play. The buttons and bumpers feel nice and clicky, with super fast response times, and there's broad support for PS Remote Play, Xbox Remote Play, and Steam Link, as well as Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, Google Stadia, and GeForce Now. Essentially, even if you don't love mobile gaming, this little controller can turn your phone into a console or PC. But the experience might change your mind about mobile games, I played Stardew Valley for so long I forgot I was playing on my phone. The built-in headphone jack is a nice touch. What really sets Backbone 1 apart is its optional app. All of the features are free for the first year. I love the searchable catalog of controller-supported games and the automatically recorded and edited in-game highlights. There's also an interface for seamless voice chat and multiplayer lobbies, as well as one-tap Twitch streaming and support for iOS gaming mode. Note, as the iPhone 13 Pro and 13 Pro Max have large cameras, Backbone offers an adapter for free. Check the box during checkout or order one separately, Lauren Stramp. At number 3. Game Sur T4 Mini, Best Compact. If you're not a fan of the cradle style and don't mind just propping your phone up to play, this tiny controller is a pocket-friendly option. Even with my large hands, I like the feel. The offset twin sticks are smooth, and the buttons are responsive, but the triggers are shallow, and the D-pad is only passable. I love the translucent design and the internal RGB lighting that highlights the buttons, you can also cycle modes and choose from 9 colors. Pairing is easy via Bluetooth 5. The 600 mAh battery is an inevitable downside, but it delivers up to 10 hours of gameplay, and you can recharge via the USB-C port. It takes 3 hours for a full charge. Vibration motors and a gyroscope make it a good pick for playing on the Nintendo Switch. The customizable turbo button is handy for some games, enabling you to automate single or group button presses. I played a few hours of Cat Quest 2 on my iPad Mini and found the T4 Mini surprisingly fun to use. At number 2. Ghoulie Kit King Kong 2 Pro, runner-up. Resembling a Switch Pro controller, the King Kong 2 Pro has a quality feel and good looks, with contrasting silver shoulder buttons and a black finish. It is textured for enhanced grip and feels comfortable in the hand for long sessions. Silky smooth joysticks and satisfyingly clicky buttons make it a pleasure to use, and the D-pad is decent. The main innovation is the electromagnetic joysticks designed to combat drift. A couple of months in and no drift so far, there is also a programmable button for autopilot gaming, APG, allowing you to record up to 10 minutes of gameplay and tap the button to repeat. The vibrate is strong, and there's a 6-axis gyroscope for Switch games. The Ghoulie Kit King Kong 2 Pro has a 1000 mAh battery that's good for up to 24 hours. 
There's a USB-C port and Bluetooth for wired or wireless connections. I mostly played Hades on the PC, but the controller worked well with Cat Quest 2 on my iPad too. Individual buttons make it easy to jump between your phone, computer, laptop, and Nintendo Switch. The lack of a companion app is good and bad, there's a learning curve to calibrating features, and firmware updates must be manual. On the other hand, who wants another app? The controller comes with a snug, molded, translucent carrying case that just has room for the cable too. At number 1. 8-Bit Do Pro 2, Best Overall. With a unique combination of features, a thoughtful retro design, and solid performance, all at a reasonable price, this is the best mobile controller for most people. The D-pad is all too frequently a disappointment in phone controllers, but not here. The buttons are satisfying, and the analog sticks are sensitive. I love the subtly textured back, which adds grip. There are double shoulder triggers with two clever programmable buttons around the back so you can keep your thumbs on the sticks. This Bluetooth controller can connect to four devices, so you can easily jump between a Nintendo Switch, MacBook, Android or iOS phone, and Windows PC, or you can connect with a cable using the controller's USB-C port. Just make sure you snag an 8-bit Do mobile clip, $15, to go with it. The 8-bit Do Pro 2 has a rechargeable battery inside that's good for about 20 hours, but it is removable, and you can swap in two AA batteries if you need. To sweeten the deal further, the 8-bit Do Ultimate software app for Android or iOS lets you remap buttons, tweak the stick, trigger, and vibration sensitivity, and even set up custom macros in your favorite mobile games. All this controller lacks is support for PlayStation and Xbox. Thanks for watching. For more details, follow the links given below in the description section. And if you are new here, please subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon.